Hello everyone and welcome to our lesson for today. Again we are returning to Charlie Harper to look at more of his animals but in particular today we're doing something a bit different in our composition, in our arrangement. Now we spoke about composition in our last lesson, it means how things are arranged on a page and today I'm going to challenge you to think mathematically and artistically. Are you ready? Let's go! In particular today, we're going to be exploring symmetry in these artworks. Something is symmetrical when it is the same on both sides. A shape has symmetry if a central dividing line, which we call a mirror line, can be drawn on it to show that both sides of the shape are exactly the same. If you flipped one to the other, you would have the same details, same size, same dimensions. Something is symmetrical when it is the same on both sides. Now here I have a selection of shapes that could be folded. You can see that each of these shapes can be folded in half so that one side is exactly the same as the other. You see the mirror line is the dashed purple line in H. Each of these shapes has at least one line of symmetry. The thing I really love about symmetry is that it brings together maths and art in such a special way. Look at this wonderful Lego pattern creation being made by a young inventor here. Is it symmetrical and how can we tell? Have a look at this. See the black, the thick black dividing line? Well, that's serving as the mirror line here, meaning that whatever is on one side must be exactly the same as what's on the other side, just flipped over. So if we start with one green block on the top, one green Lego block, there must be the same size one on the other side of the mirror line. And this goes for the placement of all of the other coloured Lego or Duplo blocks. Pretty clever, especially how detailed it is when we get down to the bottom end of this little construction. Really simple, but effective and fantastically fun experiment of art and symmetry is for you to take a blank sheet of paper, fold it in two halves and open it out again. Then, this is the fun part, squish some wet paint on one half, just one half, doesn't have to be neat, just blob it on there. Ideally, try blobbing on two or three different colours. Fold your paper back again and press it slightly, press it gently, not too hard and try not to have the two halves slip and slide over each other. When you unfold the paper, a miraculously beautiful, symmetrical design appears on both sides of the paper, like this for example. Can you spot what this animal is? Yep, it's a little butterfly. You could easily have a go at this yourselves. Do send me some photos of how that experiment turns out. That isn't our main art activity for today. No, no, no. Charlie Harper simplified shapes and forms in the animal artworks he created, as you well know. But he also liked to create symmetrical animal artworks. Sometimes you do just one animal in this way, sometimes two and even four or more where it gets really busy. We're going to take a look at examples of these. The first being Mr. Owl. Now, look at the owl's face and imagine you have a ruler to draw an imaginary line down the centre that would split it in half. In doing so, can you see that you would divide it in two parts and the details on each part would be exactly the same and in exactly the same place as the details on the other. And the same goes for the positioning of the leg and the wing. 
you could effectively create a mirror line on this oil and fold it over so that everything maps on to each other. Eyes would map onto the eyes, the wings onto the wings, the leg onto the leg, even the little speckles. And what about seeing your tiger here? Well, the same thing applies. Where would you draw the mirror line on tiger's face? Correct. Straight down the middle here. So we're dividing the nose into two equal parts and the eyes are equidistant, the same distance from this mirror line. Same with the ears. Whatever facial patterns are on one side are mirrored on the other side. Exactly the same. It creates a really balanced artwork, a striking balanced artwork. This is a raccoon and a moth. What on earth they're doing together? We don't know the story behind it, but each of these two are symmetrical. Where would you draw the mirror line, the line of symmetry? Have a think, closely study. Where would you draw the line of symmetry to ensure that you're splitting everything up equally? Whatever is on one side is exactly the same as what's on the other. Almost as if you could fold raccoon and moth in two. Correct, straight down between the eyes, through the little nose and down the stripy body. We've seen these two before, uh, the robins. Now, believe it or not, despite the busyness of this artwork, despite the freneticism, the frantic energy in the lines, this too is symmetrical. Where would you draw the line? The mirror line? Correct, down the centre of the image. And you see that actually the bird's feet look carefully you see that there's a repeated pattern there. Two gorgeous whales here, partners for life. This one is slightly easier. Is that correct? No, because there I've isolated just the tail. I couldn't fold that across and have both sides all the same details. What about this? Mm, although I've split the page in half, no, if I folded that, the noses would be placed on top of the tails and that won't work. There we go. That's the ticket. Our line of symmetry. And what about this one? Curious foxes being outfoxed perhaps by the squirrels here or the chipmunks. Even the foliage and the flowers are drawn symmetrically. Now I did say to you that Charlie Harper liked to explore symmetrical artworks with more than one animal and here we've got four insects, well five if you count the little guy in the middle, four ladybirds and they're on the attack. Mm, yes that is an unfortunate aphid or green fly as we call them. Ladybirds love green fly, they love to eat them. These four are going to make short work of this aphid. There are actually two lines of symmetry in this artwork. Ladybirds are a nice one to explore symmetry if you look at their backs. One black dot on each, exactly the same distance from the little line making it perfectly symmetrical. Now one art activity you can do today is to download the PDF in today's lesson and do the complete the other half activity, meaning I've faded out one half of the mirror line and I'd like you to draw and colour back in to complete the artwork. That's one thing you can do today. You can do this for the tiger as well, raccoon and moth. But I want to challenge you because I am so impressed with all I've seen from you. 
this far. And I think there are so many of you that would be well up for this challenge. Can you guess what it is? I would like you to look at half of Harper's animal, for example, the tiger. And without any help, from tracing or coughing, I'd like you to try and create the other half symmetrically accurate as far as possible by freehand drawing. Here you can use a ruler to help you. But I'd like to see how you get on with this challenge yourselves. I'm not expecting it to be 100% accurate, but I'd be keen to see how you would do this working with just your eye judgment alone. And I think they will be maybe some of the best artworks you've created yet. Or even, and this is the biggest challenge of all, can you recreate the artworks, the whole thing, without having to depend on any of Harper's original image? Can you redraw one yourself? I'd be so interested to see that. That will lead on really well into our lesson for next week, which is about you taking animals of your own choice to draw in symmetrical style. I'm going to show you how I did this with oil. Let's go. Once I've collected together all the essential equipment, my pencil, colouring materials, ruler and drawing paper, I make a start on drawing the owl's face. Now, as you see, I'm drawing round my little bowl here. You don't have to, but it allows me to create a really accurate, well-measured circle. The next step is to decide the placement of the oil's facial features within the circle. And the first thing I've done is actually draw a line down the center, and that's going to be my mirror line, either side of that, my eyes, the lines of the beak, all else has to be symmetrical to that line. So you'll notice that I'm taking care to measure either side of my mirror line, the distance, things like the eyes. So if I measure that they're two centimeters on one side, the other side, it has to be exactly the same. I know this is gonna take time and care and precision, but it's a wonderful skill to develop year two. The actual drawing of things like the eyes, these curved objects, that you can do freehand. There's an element of precision about this art activity, but I wouldn't want it to be all rulers and straight lines. No, it's good to try to do some aspects freehand. Drawing on my beak now, and I'm drawing lightly in pencil. The reason being, I want to be able to rub out these pencil lines when it comes to adding color. Have you identified a shape within the face shape? Right, the actual oil's face shape is a beautifully smooth, balanced heart shape. And that's what I'm aiming to recreate today. White face, heart shaped, with some brown speckles. Mind you, even they need to be symmetrical either side of the mirror line. Remembering that's the line that is cutting through, down through the centre of the beak. Now I'm adding the pupils and final little bits of detail to the top of the head. Time to look for the placement of the wings. So for each right and left wing, I'm going to use, first of all, my pencil to mark where the tip of the wing begins and attach to the body. And I'll draw my curved line down on each side, freehand, but do rotate the page if that helps you. Then I'm going to draw on with my ruler, the legs. 
equal distance either side of the mirror line. I'm pretty happy with that so far. I can rub out any lines that are going in the wrong direction. Um, but now I'm going to start sketching in lightly the background block shapes. If you look at the original artwork, you'll notice that these aren't symmetrical. So if I fold the page in half, the background block shapes are more random. And I like this combination of the symmetry and the precision of the animal. And then the more abstract, jumbled, come as you are, patternation in the background. And I'm going to echo that. I also like the fact that the colours are so dark and muted compared to the bright striking body of our bird, our owl. But of course you can choose your own background shapes, patterns and colours. Totally up to you. It's time to start to apply colour and I'm opting for a bright yellow. You can see that I'm moving my felt tip pen smoothly in one direction following the curved shape of the wing. Carefully making sure I'm not going over my accurately drawing lines. I'm turning the page around so it's easier to fill in colour. It's always easier to colour away from the direction of your body as opposed to in towards your body. Now working on the face, picking out that lovely heart shape and the point of the oil's beak. As you can see I'm rubbing out the pencil lines as I go. The lighter you sketch them on the easier it is it's going to be to rub them out. With the light colours now added, moving on to pick out the darker areas in the face and that's the pupils of those little eyes and also the spots at the top and the base of the body. The top of the head, dark brown, the same colour for the base of the body. These, as I said before, are also symmetrical. Same placement on each side of my imaginary mirror line. Now I'm moving to work on the background shapes. Now these aren't symmetrical in contrast to the oil's body. These are more abstract random shapes placed, muted colours, linear and circular. I'm using my ruler to mark these in. I mean you can have fun with this, the shapes you choose to make in the background. And that's not to say that you can't also be drawn foliage or details of the trees or surrounding environment of your animal. Because the oil's body and face is so light, choosing darker muted colours for the background will highlight, exaggerate the oil itself, having that contrast between light and dark. Notice the smooth lines I'm forming with my felt tip pen in one direction and that creates a flat block of colour of grey. A nice contrast to the bright bold yellow and it's my aim to fill the entire background with colour. This is going to take a while and um, time and care but it will be worth it. When you've done all that, 
you can outline to further highlight the shape of your animal with the darker colour like brown for example or black using a fine tipped pen and sign and date your work give it a title too and do please share your work artists thank you so much for watching and have fun